Hey everyone, it's Multi, and today I want to break down an impressive comeback from Big versus G2 in the Blast Premier Fall groups. This comeback to me was impressive because, like I say, it was against G2 and this was their own pick. So G2 picked Inferno and although Big was already winning the series, you could see G2 were really confident in winning this Inferno game when you was watching the webcams and everything. And I just thought it was impressive that Big managed to come back and what they had to go through to get there because there were so many 4v5s that Big may as well have just spawned in with four random teammates alive on the T side. One thing I found pretty funny is that round one is kind of foreshadowing for how the map actually turns out. So let's run through it. Big push down middle with four players on the CT side and immediately begin to lose players. Straight into a 3v5 with Gade alone on B. With this advantage, G2 smartly decide to stay collected ramp while Amanek lurks in apartments. This eventually works into a situation where even though the round looks winnable by G2 already, this lurk should be guaranteeing it. Amanek takes out the rotated Gade near library, but then Searson picks up two mid and drops to Hunter. Tabson is now left near Patio in a 1v3. Amanek playing near Arch and Nico watching B while Hunter takes the bomb to A. This results in Hunter falling to Tabson due to the negligence of the A clear, forcing a 1v2 where, well, I'm just going to make you watch it. This form from Tabson is carried on throughout the match as he ends with 24 frags for big, the most on the side, but that's less surprising when you know it goes to OT. You would expect more from an OT game, but this suggests that no one on big got carried. The collective group effort allowed big to play on the back foot and still disappoint G2. Tabson showed up when he was needed because in the CT half, he was kind of lackluster, but when it's time to come back, he really turns up the heat. Let's fast forward to Big ending 5-10 down and start breaking down their T side. In the pistol round, here we have a simple horse pop that success came from G2 pushing down middle and banana, leaving apps open for Big to stampede through. Tabson gets dropped with half of Big's utility and once G2 realize that Big are going to pop out of halls, they take the fight straight to them. Where I would argue, if you have no pit presence or no library presence, the fight from balcony will always favor instead of the fight from short. Allowing the trio of Big to clean up the round, in this round, Nexa is caught completely pants down. From this point, Gade is free to take pit and effectively double peek short with Searson on balcony. No one is going to kill both of these T's in these positions. With this, Keto's position around Boiler chokes out and finishes off the rest of G2. Notice at this point, this began as a 4v5, and it's a testament to Big's resiliency as they in fact at this point have to face 15 more rounds where they are 4v5. Yep, after the first half, there are still 15 rounds where Big are 4v5. If we fast forward towards round 19, we have some boba. That means we got some buy on buy action. It starts pretty standard. Big fight for banana control with Glade flashing off top banana and Tabson and Molly and car, eventually flashing off the corner as well, securing the banana control. While this is going down, G2 are tight up top mid, not budging for anything, but also letting apartments go completely unwatched. Eventually, Searson has the testes to dry peak CT and gets killed from a wonderful off angle from Nico. This is shortly traded out by Keto as he times Nexus smoke perfectly. This is the trigger to take the site as they smoke off CT and push collectively. And although it's rare to have three players have their back to mid for so long at Banana, Tizian has been keeping an eye out for A movement just in case there is a flank. Nexa manages to stand strong and gets two picks on the B entry turning this into a 2v4, where Gade, the only man taking the B-site, has to plant instantly. Jax hears Tizian rotate off of mid and confirms that there's only one player on B right now, but with how the CTs are so spread, Hunter can't capitalize on it because of the CT smoke. 
Tizian finally arrives and re-smokes CT and ruins as the early deaths from his teammate leaves him blessed with extra utility. Finally, when the CTs make their attempt at the retake, the bomb timer has already ticked on for too long. Tizian puts the nail in the coffin with two impressive kills, leaving Amanek to save as the bomb goes off. Again, winning while already on the back foot, which at this point, you could imagine it's going to have a mental toll on G2. Eventually, we get to round 21, where Big now go on to lose five rounds in a row. A major thorn in their side proved to be Amanek's orping, and Big's poor attempts of using A long wraps to attack the A site. From here, we actually see a shift. Big begin to stay away with committing too many players A long. As G2 make their 15th round, it's time for Big to catch up and take it to OT. There are 10 rounds left of this match, where Big wins 7 more 4v5s. We're at round 26 now, where Big really need to dig their heels in. They run a textbook horse pop, losing tabs in early middle, leaving Searson on an island outside of mid. Gade manages to get the entry on the site on Jax, leaving the site under the control of Big as G2 are towards Arch. Thankfully, as mid look clear to G2 after picking off Tabson, Searson manages to get onto the site, and the T's are fully set up and ready to take on a retake. The bomb goes down, and Gade gets picked off from a really cheeky boost Cubby, but the pit setup proves too strong, and as Nico gets killed in apartments trying to work his way to dismantle the pit setup, the CTs are set in their save and headed over towards B. This here hall's pop is just one of many occasions where g 2s failure to contest at is one of the many catalysts that leads to their demise. Up to round 27 now, where next follows a blunder on the part of G2 regarding banana control and banana pressure. It seems G2 are particularly confident that if there's no fast play this round for B, then Big are going to set up an A take, and G2 are willing to fight for mid control. In this though, Big demonstrates a common practice in waiting out the banana smokes and begin to retake it as soon as G2's smokes have faded. Nico gets picked off from Tabson as some lazy utility usage allowed him to live. With this, Big comes storming in, picking off Nexa as well. Naturally, with the advantage, Big use their utility to then execute on B a little, but make sure that in their haste, they do save some utility and don't commit too many resources to actually take fights B. Instead, they slow it down, rerouting back to A, smoking off long corner and taking the site from apps. Big plant the bomb and with no contact for quite some time, G2 call the save as they want to keep the AWP for the next round. Next up on round 28, G2 don't have the best of buys. Naturally, they give up a lot of map control, hoping that Big will blindly run into the stacked pistols over on B. Instead of this, Big continue to pressure apps and head towards the AWP over on A. Losing a man, but executing on the site still nonetheless. Amanek tucks on the site to try and get more kills. However, the number of T's overwhelm him, giving Big the site again. With the poor buy on the CTs, they half attempt to retake while Hunter loses the only gun while running away. Jax is then left waiting around to try and pick someone off, but unfortunately for him, is unsuccessful. We're up to round 29 now. Pressure is applied across the map from Big as a whole, gaining banana, taking apartments and threatening top mid control. And as the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. A majority of the T's go through apartments as they execute on the site, this time opting to smoke off library so that Tabson can lurk around A long. Amanek gets caught in an extremely aggressive angle where I like the idea, but when nothing comes from it, you look absolutely brain dead at the pro level. Jax is quick to follow him six feet under and the site is Biggs yet again. G2 again opt to save, of course, what else can they do? This is where I look back at round 24 and I'm confused at how they've opted to being less aggressive apps. Here we can see a great setup that gets G2 many kills and halts the push. And even before this, they were taking apps, they were lurking inside of it, 
G2 really begin to drop the ball in the face of what looks to be a hungry and confident big. Now, we're at round 30. One more to take it into OT. G2's economy at this point is the weakest out of the last few rounds and big know it. As a result, they are extremely happy walking up mid and not scared of facing an AWP. And did I mention they were confident? They walk straight through the top mid smoke, picking off Amanek and leaving Jax alone another time, ready to pick up the pieces that Amanek drops. Jax is good for one, but Tabson clears him out and the site is bigs. And just like earlier, Key 2 pushes through another smoke and picks off two more library and arch. And at this point, I'm not sure what round is a better summary for this comeback. The 1v3 pistol clutch in the first round, or the final round of regulation here, guns out through smokes. Round 31. G2 finally have an answer in the first round of OT, deciding that maybe 3 players A is a good idea, slowly chipping away at the T's and forcing Gade into a 1v2 which he loses. Now I bet G2 wish they did this earlier. Big answer this with taking their presence towards B in the next round. Again though, G2 weirdly decide to sleep on apartments this round. As a result of the conditioning of Big, G2 can't trust the fact that A could simply be hit from a horse pop. As a result, G2 respect that they can still hit A, even if they have top mid, leaving two players on B to fight against the full execute. Big execute on B and a hit with little resistance apart from a kill coming in from Nexa. With this, Big had enough utility to keep the CTs at bay for long enough where Tizian and Gade managed to beat out the final three CTs. Last round of the T half again. And G2 decide to take three towards A. With two players pushing halls, Jax and Amanek both get kills towards A. And although I have praised Big for playing well off the back foot, they don't have an answer for this as Hunter cleans up the kills on balcony and Amanek's push pays off for a second time this round as he gets the final kill. Now, as long as Big can get almost as many CT rounds they did in regulation, they can win this. Doesn't sound too convincing, but let's see. Big accept that their banana takes and fights have not been too favourable for them. Playing three players towards B and keeping most of the utility to counter the take. Tabson and Gade eventually get executed on and use both of their mollies to make it really uncomfortable for G2. This buys time for support to rotate in and clean up the rest of the teeth. A big factor in this hold was as mentioned, the utility they saved from not fighting for banana, helping them outlast the T's utility on the take. A really good call from reflecting on the regulation CT side. Next up, on the penultimate round, G2 play it slower, and with this, Big demonstrate their fantastic internal clock on the CT side as they have perfect timings with their mollies. This takes down G2's health tremendously, and all while this is happening, Keto aggresses middle, clearing out mid and confirming the hit on B. Making this the easiest hold for Gade and Tabson they've probably had to deal with. Finally. G2 spread across the map. Big are again respecting banana control and eventually have Sears and take banana with the thanks to some good timing as Nico just relieves his presence on B. This allows everyone but Sears to stack towards A as G2 get ready to attempt to take it. With a few flashes from Hunter, the horse pop commences and is quickly thwarted by the vicious setup. Ready for it as Gabe gets Nico's lurk and Tizian finishes off Hunter. Although Big Clan were already up in this series, watching this live, you can tell G2 were very happy at the start of this match and really expecting it to be a simple finish into the third map. I had to break down this match because Big's calls, when the side swapped, were great, really keeping things simple and working together to get their rounds. I'm sure that with a few changes, G2 would have cleaned this up on another day, but this day wasn't the one. I hope you enjoyed this longer form of video and I just want to give a mention to again my website and my other socials because I'm just trying to grow them up a bit more. 
Over on the website, you can have simple read-ups of the videos I make and might be even more content than what I just produced on this channel. There's also a newsletter. I don't write that yet, but I'm going to pretty soon and I just want to get the ball rolling. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been Molesyokers and I'll catch you in the next one.